Hello everyone back again. Okay, I'm doing part three to the spirits in the Bible. And this spirit we're talking about is about the summit. The spirit of the summit, okay? This is the spirit, okay? This is not what the most high gave us, okay? So these are wolves, okay? These are wolves to the summits, okay, to the spirit, okay? To them, okay. Text of the wolves of Saint Ignatius. I-G-N-A-T-I-U-S. Okay. Whatever that means, I'm going to look it up. I didn't look it. I'm going to look it up right now, then. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Yep. Um, that might be his name or something. Or her name or something. Okay, he's a he's a Spanish he's a he's a Spanish priest. I'm hearing them um popes and shit. Okay, this is how he looks though. I don't know who this person is though, but they say he is venerated as Saint Ignatius of Loya, was a Spanish Catholic priest and theologian who, with Peter Faber and Francis Xavier, founded the religious order of the social social. The religious order of the Society of Jesus and became its first superior general in Paris 1541. Add that up, okay? So he's, I don't think this person good, okay? But we're gonna see, y'all. Um, they said he founded the Jesus, the Jesuit order and was one of the most influential figures in counter reformation in 1534. Known for his missionary, missionary, educational, and shareable works, the Jesuit order order were leading force in the modernizing of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, so let me read his rules, okay, for the summit. Okay. Lord Jesus, okay. Rules for becoming aware and understanding to some extent the, difficult, the different movements we shall call in the soul the good to receive them and the bad to reject them. See? So I guess when you become slaves to them, you you are bad, okay? They don't want they don't really need you right now, okay? Oh no, oh, oh, let's read. Um, this is the first rule. The first rule. In the persons who go from mortal sin to mortal sin, the enemy is commonly loose to propose to them a parian pleasure, okay. The enemy, the people they done killed, okay? Um, see, I told you they be losing their bodies to have sex with them. What I say? Making them imagine sensual delights and pleasures in order to hold them more and make them grow in their vices and sins. Mm -hmm. And these persons, the good spirit, lose the opposite method. See what I tell y'all? Pricking them and biting their consciousness through the process of reason. Second rule, the second, and the persons who are going on intensely cleansing their sins and rising from good to better in the service of God, our Lord, them. It is the method contrary to that in the first rule, for then it is the way of the evil spirit to bite, sadden, and put obstacles, decrying with false reasons that one may not go on, and it is proper to the good to give courage and strength. Consolations, tears, inspiration, and quiet, easing and putting away all obstacle, obstacles that one may go on in well doing. Also, I did see a vision the other day where if people, if I was murdered by them, they gonna see Gina face first, okay? But the most high is like literally behind her, trying to tell them, come to me, come to me. But Gina mouth, have you ever watched Candy Man too? When she went down there and Candy Man picture is drawn on the wall, maybe when, maybe it was in it was in one and two, where his face is drawn on the wall, he like yelling like his mouth wide open, literally. It how it, it's like that. It's like that. It's like I don't know how to explain it. It's like that. It's like bro. It's like it's, it's like she ain't like a got a big ass head, y'all. Have y'all seen young boy concerts when they be having that little thing, that little poster board with his big ass head on there? Okay, it's like Gina, big ass head, her mouth wide open. But then the real one, the real most high, is like literally behind her, trying to tell them to come his way. But her mouth is open, so they thinking they talking to her type shit. You know, they don't want to go to her. 
they probably go to the real one. And that's what he tells them. He like, I I am behind her. She's fake. Okay, I literally seen that shit in a vision, y'all. Okay. Next. The rule. The third. A spiritual consolation. I call it consolation when some interior movement in the soul is caused. Okay. I just heard. The, I just heard. I just heard, well, why you don't remember that when you black out, but it was in the most high voice. But he didn't just say that, though, y'all. So I told you to the summit, that spirit of the summit, he surrounded me right now. He hears me. He know I'm talking about him. He just said yes, y'all. See, that's how they can freak people, okay? He's saying yes, okay? Stop talking to me. I call it constellation when some interior movement in the soul is caused. Though which the soul comes to be inflamed with love of the creator and lord. And when it can, in consequence is love. No created thing on the face of the earth in itself, but in the creator of them all. Likewise, when he shed tears that move to love of his lord, whether out of sorrow for one's sins, or for the passion of Christ our lord, or because of other things directly connected with his service and praise. Finally, I call consolation every increase of hope, faith, and charity, and all interior joy which calls and attracts to heavenly things and to the salvation of one's souls, crying it and giving it peace in its creator and Lord. Um, he keep pointing in my heart, y'all, so I don't know if he kind of hurt me or what, y'all. Anyways, the fourth rule, the fourth rule, the fourth. A spiritual desolation, I call desolation all the contrary of the third world, such as darkness of soul, disturbance in it, yeah, he just said my heart is dark, movement to things low and ugly, the unquiet of different aggregations and temptations, moving to want of confidence, without hope, without love, when one finds oneself all lazy, tear-picked, sad, and is separated from her creator and Lord. See, even Gina telling me to shut the fuck up now, because I'm making this spirit mad. Okay? But my people telling me to go on. Okay? So I'm finna go on, y'all. Because as consolation is contrary to desolation, in the same way the thoughts which come from consolation are contrary to the thoughts which come from desolation. Okay. The fifth rule, the fifth, in time of desolation, never to make a change, but to be firm and constant in the resolution and determination in which one was the day preceding such desolation, or in the determination in which she was in the preceding consolation. Because as in consolation, it is rather the good spirit who guides and counsels us. So in desolation, it is the bad with which counsels we cannot take a course to decide rightly. See, right here, this shit is a riddle right here. Y'all ever heard them riddles? I'm, I just went through a riddle right here. So people in the middle, they be confused, okay? So they go around in circles, okay, trying to find the real one. But Gina got a fucking big ass head, her mouth wide open, and she losing the most high voice, okay? So they, they like... Fuck that shit. I'm just going to be running around this bitch. Because I'm not finna go towards her type shit. And I just went through a riddle. That what I fuck I just did. I just went around. Um, I just went. Yeah, it's just hard to explain. I just had a vision while reading this. Okay. The sixth rule. The sixth. Although in desolation, we ought not to change our first resolutions. It's very helpful intensely to change ourselves against the same desolation. And by insisting more on prayer, meditation, on much examination, and by giving ourselves more scope in some suitable way of doing pretense. Right here, the sixth rule is saying, don't go against the one who creates your bitch ass. Okay, I'm just saying. Don't go against him. Okay, the seventh rule. The seventh. Let him who in desolation consider how the Lord has left him in foul and his natural power. See how he's freaky. See, the sixth rule said don't do it. The seventh rule is saying to turn on him, basically. In order to resist the different agitations and temptations of the enemy, since he can with the divine help, which always remains to him, though he does not clearly perceive it. 
because the Lord has taken from him his great favor, great love, and intense grace, leaving him. However, grace enough for eternal salvation. Yeah. Okay. Eighth rule. Okay. This is the eighth. Let him who is in desolation labor to be impatient, which is contrary to the vegetation which come to him. And let him think that he will soon be consoled, imploring against the desolation, the devices, as it said in the sixth rule. Okay. Um, I can't tell y'all what that means right now. I'm going blank. Ninth rule, the ninth. There are three principal reasons why we find ourselves desolated. The first is because of our being tepid, lazy, or neglecting in our spiritual exercises, and so thought our faults, spiritual consolation withdraws from us. The second, to try us and see how much we are and how much we let ourselves out in his service and praise without such great pay of consolation and great graces. And the third, to give us true acquaintance and knowledge that we may interiorly feel that it is not ours to get or keep great devotion, intense love, tears, or any other spiritual foundation. But that all is the gift and grace of God our Lord, and that we may not build a nest in a thing not ours, raise not intellect into some pride or vainglory, affording to us devotion or the other things of the spiritual consolation. Now, this ninth rule is basically about um, the tapes, and with well, the first tape, and Shanice was not supposed to do what she did, y'all. Read that again. That was supposed to be Gina. I mean, even though Gina was there, but really Shanice, like, did it, you know? But she, Gina was there, though, type shit. I don't know how to explain it, though. Like, she the one who built it and everything. See, read, read again for y'all. The third, to give us true acquaintance and knowledge that we may intuitively feel that it's not ours to get or keep. Great devotion, intense love, tears, or any other spiritual collation, but that, but that all is the gift and grace of God, our Lord, and that we may not build a nest in a thing not ours, raising our intellect into some pride or vainglory, a forbidding to us devotion or the other things of the spiritual constellation. And I just seen a black ass shadow appear on my wall over there. Okay, the tenth rule. The tenth. I, I heard, I guess you didn't read that part. The tenth rule. The tenth. Let him who is in consolation think how he will be in the desolation which will come after, taking new strength for then. Powerful before them, but for then, okay? Eleventh rule, the eleventh. Let him who is consoled see to humbling himself and lowering himself as much as he can, thinking how little he is able for in the time of desolation without such grace or consolation. See, um, I got, um, yeah, Shanice did not get, Praise like Gina did, that was type shit, you know? Um, on the contrary, let him who is in desolation think that he can do much with the great sufficiency to resist all his enemies, taking strength in his creator and Lord. Okay, I don't know what that means. The fourth rule, a lot of rules to this, okay? The fourth. The enemy acts like a woman in being weak against vigor and strong of will. Because as it is the way of the woman when she is quarreling with some man to lose heart, taking flight when the man shows her much courage. And on the contrary, really it's going to be a man doing this, but the woman wants to show him, I can do it too. And that would have said the man shows her much courage because he believes she can do it type shit. And on the contrary, if the man losing heart begins to fly, remember I told you my tarot readings, um, the women likes to kill for their men. 
Cause it turned they man on. It made they sex great again. Yeah. Okay. Losing heart begins to fly. The warmth, revenge, and feel, sweetie, of the woman is very great, and so without bounds. In the same manner, it is the way of the enemy to weaken and lose heart. His temptations taking flight when the person who is exercising himself in spiritual things opposes a bold front against the temptation of the enemy, doing diametrically the opposite. And on the contrary, if the person who is exercising himself commences to have fear and lose heart in suffering the temptations, there is no beast so wild on the face of the earth. That means they do nobody gonna come up against them, okay? They didn't believe in that, okay? No beast so wild on the face of the earth as the enemy of human nature in following out his damnable intention with so great malice, okay? Um... See, the Most High really did want this to end, okay? I mean, he didn't, we never wanted this to happen. Um, but people didn't think we were going to do it. I'm going to do it, okay? Whoever. Oh, Lord, the 13th rule. The 13th. Likewise, he acts as a lentilist lover in wanting to be secret and not revealed. False. The Most High never said that shit. That's dumb. As you can read, motherfucking, um, wool 11th and 12th, okay? For as the, oh, yeah, you can probably read all of them and see. For as the lenterous man who, speaking for an evil purpose, so licks a daughter of a good father or a wife of a good husband, wants his words and persuasions to be secret, and the contrary displeases him much, when the daughter reveals to her father or the wife to her husband, he lynches words in depraved intention. Intention. See? Because he easily gathers that he will not be able to succeed with the undertaking begun. I don't know, y'all. In the same way, when the enemy of human nature brings his wiles and frustrations to the just soul, he wants and desires that they be received and kept in secret. Um, I guess me. But when one reveals them to his good confessor or to another spiritual person that knows his deceits and evil ends, it is very grievous to him because he gathers from his manifest deceits being discovered that he will not be able to succeed with his wickedness, with his wickedness begun. And last rule, y'all, 14th, the 14th rule. Likewise, he behaves as a sheep bent on conquering and robbing what he desires for as a captain and chief of the army, pitching his camp and looking at the forces or defenses of a stronghold attacks. It, on the weakest side, in like manner, the enemy of human nature Roaming about, looks and turn at all our virtues, theologicals, cardinal, and moral, and what he finds the weakest and most in need for our eternal salvation, that he attacks us and the aims is taking us. Okay, you can look at that both of their ways. You can look at the Most High. He do want us all to come back as his children, or you can look at it the oh, they way that the Most High trying to take their positions now positions okay but he didn't want to do that though but okay i hope y'all enjoy the 14 rules of the summit okay if you want to join them or whatever the fuck okay um but yes hope y'all enjoy my peace